Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praises to the Most High, y'all. This is the day that Yah has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am trying to get some light because um, electricity is off. Um, and I wanted to record this video. Yeah, but electricity went off. And I don't need the electricity to really call a cord, but then I realize it's a situation with light. But you can hear me, all praises to the most high, even if you cannot see me. This is the day of Feast of Trumpet, Yom Torah. And so I am home because it's a Sabbath. And so my children and I are home on this day and i'm grateful to the most high for this day i was looking forward to the fall feast i have uh, um expectancy and, and excitement in my ruach the more i learned of the most high um and then and his feast days the more excited i become when they are approaching because you know you get the same feeling that you would have gotten when you observe Christmas, you know, when Christmas time, I told my children and I devotions this morning that when Christmas time, everybody, when December first come around, everyone is getting their decorations, they're making their traveling plans, people buying their clothes, um, they planning what they're going to eat, family get together, and so there's an excitement for that time, that season. So this is the season of trumpets. Yom Torah, and I'm excited because when I learn and understand what it means, I give the most high praise that I am in the season, and I understand that this season is the time when He, when Yehoshua, our Messiah, our King, can appear. It's in this season, the season of trumpet, trumpets, that He will return and we don't know the day nor the hour but all praises to the most high through revelation of the ruah akadish and um understanding the scriptures we know that this is the season the season of trauma i just shared with my children that you have plenty people who are saying oh jesus is coming and jesus is coming and there were there were many predictions about when he was coming and many persons even gave dates but these would be the same people who would say, oh, you don't have to keep that. That's the Old Testament. I spoke to us two seven day Adventists and a Jehovah Witness. And they all say, and then of course the Christians, oh, um, Jesus then do those. We finish with them. We don't have to keep those no more. We don't keep them. The seven day Adventists say, oh, um, no, we don't keep those. And one was like, um, you keeping them? No. And um, so they all have the same sediments when it comes to the keeping the observing of Yah's feast. But they all expecting Yeshua to come. But they don't understand that in observing all of his Sabbaths, his Sabbaths, is saying that you are watching and that you're waiting. You understand that in keeping his Sabbaths is keeping his time. Keeping his time. And then you learn and you you understand the seasons of the of yeah, and that he moves within his times and his seasons. So that's why it's important to keep to learn and, and observe and God over his Sabbaths. And that was his instructions to me years ago. And so I'm happy that in the last few years, by listening to other Hebrew teachers and people who have been practicing the culture and customs of Israel for many years, I am learning and I'm excited about it. So Shabbat Shalom to you. Happy Feast of Trumpets. And um, I hope that even if this is not the day, because I know many persons have different day to observe it, that whatever day that you observe, the feast of trumpets on that you are obedient and come and in compliant so that your obedience may be fair i don't debate the dates i don't want to discuss it um if you do doing what you do and it works for you all praises to the most high as long as you are in obedient i don't think we should have no long debates and discussions about no day because the truth of the matter is none of us may have it right according to jubilees 
they knew that we would get the days mixed up. No one knew. Abraham knew. They all knew that we would get the days mixed up. But the knowledge and understanding that we now have, that this is something we are supposed to do throughout our generations, let's just do it. Let's do it and be obedient. And when Yahushua comes back and we all get it back to our land, you'll have the right dates. But until then, just do it. Hallelujah. Just do it and be obedient in your doing. It's about your relationship with the Most High. All praises to Yah. Hallelujah. So, I want to speak to you today on um, the question that was asked to me asked of me a few weeks before I would have uploaded the last video and the question was how did we get here how did we get here Matthew or Matthias 24 and 12 says and because the transgression of Torah of the Torah shall abound the love of many will wax cold and that's just like her summary of the answer as to how we got here okay and speaking about the homosexual situation i was asked a few weeks before i recorded the video how to treat a homosexual how did we get here how did we get here and here being or here meant where so many of our young people are turning more and more to an alter alternative lifestyle. You have the transgender and um, all the um, the question about what is a man and all that other stuff. What is a woman? The, she, the sister was like, how, how did we get here? And when I first read, because this was a WhatsApp communication, immediately I wanted to give a response. And I just said, um... Not know because I hadn't thought the answer through. But after thinking it through, as I pondered the question, then and reflecting on what, and reflecting on what was shared in that previous video, I want to give an answer. And um, several reasons as to why I think we are where we are. One, we got here because although we knew that there was a sore. Instead of treating it, we tried to cover it up. And as a result, it festered and got infected and the infection spread like a cancer. So here we are now, and where we are now is the result of a sore that was left to fester. And I've thought about when I had spoken to my then pastor the late pastor, and he said that um, they were in the closet. Immediately, my mind went on a sore that was left untreated and covered. Covered, but untreated. We got here because instead of addressing the issue as sin, we tried to cover it up and pretended it was not happening because we knew but we wanted to act as if it was not happening. We were comfortable with them being in the closet. And that's what he had said. You know, we knew that it was an issue. But we were comfortable with them being in the closet. Okay? And so it just grew and grew and grew because it was left unattended, not dealt with. From And that is my view on how we got it from a pers spiritual perspective. I can't speak to the social and the political because I don't, I don't, <clears throat> that's not my realm. I can stay in my lane. So I'm speaking from a spiritual perspective. That is how I believe we got here. We did not call it out for sin. We did not preach on the teacher. We did not talk about it. We left it and hoped that it would just go away or they would just stay in the closet. We were comfortable with them being in the closet. We got here because we sat in the seat of the scornful as judge and not as a brother and a sister. 
We got here because we were operating from a religious spirit and not the spirit of the Most High, which is love, love for humanity and love for our fellow men. We got here because we forgot where Yah brought us from. We forgot the sin that had so easily beset us. You understand? And we were willing to deal with the log in someone else's eye instead of dealing with the mole or the moth that was in our eye. We got it because we condemned them and decided that their sin was too great for them to come into the assembly, too great for Yah to forgive. So we cast them out into spiritual lullabah, lullabah, a place of no pasture, no spiritual life. They were condemned to die a spiritual death and go to hell because that is what we thought they deserved because, you know, they were committing or committing the unforgettable sin, unforgivable sin. And it's going to take people like David anointing and humble to show kindness for your sake. What do I mean? David went to Moshosaphat, who was in Lolaba, who was cast aside after his father Jonathan and his grandfather Saul had died. And he was just cast into Lolaba. He was lamed. And even though he had come from royalty, he was cast over there and left and forgotten. And David went and took him out of Lolaba and brought him to sit in his broken state to sit at the king's table. So as I was driving home, I began to reflect not only on that question as to relate to homosexuality, but also as it relates to us now and where we are now in general, in general, in every area. How did we get here? Here, meaning in the Bahamas right now, there is a murder every other day. You go to sleep at night, the last thing you would hear, the news, on the news, the police is on the scene of a murder. First thing in the morning you wake up, they back on another scene. We have had in the last few days, three 14-year-old boys viciously attacked and stabbed in three separate school violent incidents. A 14-year-old boy was charged with attempted murder. A few weeks ago, a 16-year-old was charged with a string of murders. It is alleged that he was a hitman. Right now, there are so many who are homeless and on the streets with others obviously with mental is mental issues and their families do not want to don't want to be bothered with them or cannot afford to deal with them and there is no institution here to deal with it so they're on the street living on the sidewalks living in old abandoned buildings I believe that the social ills we are experiencing here are common to other countries as well. So I want to look at us in a general aspect and ask, how did we get here? How did we get here? All of the social ills, domestic violence, rape, murder, the increase in homosexuality and alternative lifestyle among our young people, incest, broken marriage, marriages. How did we get here? Are all social ills rooted in sin? I am coming from a spiritual perspective. All rooted in sin. We got here because we stopped obeying the commandments of the Most High. Yeah. We got here because we don't love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That's a command. We got here because we do not want for others what we want for ourselves. You know, we have this social status. You up there and I up down here. We have little eyes and big ears. You understand me? And someone got to be at the bottom of the ladder in order for us to feel important. We got it because we do not want. We got it because we live lives of envy, jealousy, contention, and strife. We got it because we stopped teaching our children the way of Yah. We no longer focus on our children's spirit. 
but on their natural body, their natural self. They need to look good. Have the most updated technology, the latest Apple iPhone. It doesn't matter how much it costs. The latest fashion, name brand clothes, and the latest hairstyles. They need to look, I don't know what the slang is now, but back in my day, it used to be cool or hip or something. I don't know what they say now. Fresh, I think that's what they say. We are no longer focused on their spirituality and having good moral character. Because, you see, we have associated the Most High, who they call God, with the church. And because many of the adults are now disenfranchised or just tired of the church, they just, they come to the place where they are frustrated with the church and what's happening. That's how they are relating to the Most High. So when they speak of the church and, and quote-unquote God, the response is, well, oh, well, the pastor's them doing this and the pastor's them doing that. That's our level of spirituality as far as what the pastors and the church is doing. So we are raising, as a result, we are raising a generation of spiritually dead children. They have absolutely no connection with their spirituality, with their true inner self. And you know what is so crazy? And now that I'm thinking about it, when they do connect, I saw on YouTube, we have a lot of, I don't know about young women, who are going off into witchcraft. You see, again, this stems from their experience with the Christian church. You see what I'm saying? So they have absolutely no consciousness of the truth of who the Most High is. Or His commandments. Because again, their, percep their perception their um, experience was based solely on church, church and religious folk. <clears throat> their view of the most sides based on the Christian church where all of the immorality that happens in the world happens there. <clears throat> When I volunteered at an NGO organization, teenagers from the court were sent there to complete community service. That would have been their sentence. And they had to do so many hours of community service. Some of these teenagers were charged with attempted murder. They were all involved in school violence. And I talk about violence, I'm talking about violence. Where they said, it's the law of the jungle. It's either you get them or they get you so it was a fight to live which is why they had attempted murder charge because when you get take somebody head and um, slam it on the, the floor and tell on the concrete and tell it crack that's one girl said to me she was 13 and that's what she did for another child so and i was supposed to counsel with them and as I listened to their story, I was like, Father, help me. What am I supposed to do with these children? I was lost because they were talking some things that when I was in high school, I didn't have those experiences. You know? So I couldn't even relate. But their experience was real. So I asked the Father, what am I going to do with these children? And the Ruah said to me, he told me, to listen to them, let them talk. And my response to them was supposed to be the scripture. He said, read the scripture to them. So I did, when we sat in that circle, I sat them in a circle and each person went around and talked. And when they were finished, I took up the Bible and I read to them from Proverbs. Again, it was because he was saying, they are not getting in their home. See, so their spiritual life, their spirituality, it's just shut off, just dead. They don't have nothing to hold on to. When they are faced with a situation, they are responding out of their flesh, their natural man. They don't have nothing to anchor on to. And probably what they're anchoring on to is what they see on these 
um, movie videos, BET and MTV and all those other kind of stuff, which is going to cause them to end up right where they are. There was nothing they had that was going to guide them in a positive direction to even think and say, well, okay, um, they had a little word in them to hold on to and say, boy, a consciousness to say, boy, that ain't right. You know, that ain't right. I shouldn't do that. But they just react where they are. And so that is what I did. I read to them. That's all I did. Read the scriptures. And those children began to warm up to me so that when it was their time to leave, they bought different, put together and bought different little food items. I remember that they bought lunch for me because they appreciated it so much. The time that I spent with them and talking with them and giving them counsel from the word. Do you understand? Now there were other persons with, with there, but they felt so close to me. I was so surprised when they came that day and they did that. You understand me? See, what we think these children don't want is what they need. And we ought to give them what they need. I was speaking to an elder on Friday and we were talking about the same situation that's going on with all of this violence. And he said to me, you are so lucky that you don't have no problem with your children. And I look at him, I tell him, that ain't no luck. I got nothing to do with luck. I said to him, when I was going through my marital situation, and even though I knew what I'm doing now was what I was supposed to do, when I started going through my divorce, I could tell you that was all on my mind. I, from, we went and we kept the Sabbath. When it was the feast days, we went. But it was no real commitment on my part. Especially when we moved here. I was just so messed up and angry and dealing with my own bitterness and venting and whining about what I'd, I'd walked through and I had to leave my home and all this other kind of stuff. You understand me? That I stopped focusing on my children's spirituality and in that few minutes, I noticed something in them too. I didn't say anything to them. One day when I came and listened to their response and stuff, I went in the room and I knelt down to pray and I said, now yeah, you know I ain't built for this. I can't deal with no rebellious teenage and no new age movement mindset because I was listening to some of the things that were coming from their mouth. And as I was in there praying, I heard the Buddha said to me, learn and follow the way of the Ugly. He, That's what he had told me in 2020. He's, he only was saying to me, go back to what you was doing. Teach them the culture and customs of the Hebrews. I got up, I came out and I said to them, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. You understand me? We're going to observe the Sabbath. On Sabbath, that's it. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't doing nothing. We can have our devotions. We can read the scripture. We can watch our teaching on YouTube together. That's what we're going to do. And that's what we've been doing. All praises to God. So I had to hmm, get myself together, get over my bitterness and my anger and set myself in order so that I could have attacked and saved my children from this new age, immoral, no standard society. I had to make the law of Yah the standard in my home. Okay, so we got here because we moved the whole landmark. Mamas used to say, don't move the whole landmark. You understand? That's what we did. We reduced our standard of morality. Oh, there's a different generation. So I'm like, oh, you know, they're different, they're different. And I say, the word of Yah is still the same. Heaven still the same. The lake of fire can still be the same. Yah ain't change. So why we think they're so different? The pattern life is still the same. The only thing that has changed is that we reduce our moral standard. They have much more distraction. We allowing them to just float and fly all about without any real proper guidance. You understand me? We took away and moved away from them what they need. You understand me? 
lawlessness has increased wickedness has increased man's mind has become more and more deviant more perverted and what did we do we move the landmark we 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 move the standard of morality we just say oh y'all go and do what you like do you understand that's what we did that was our response that i'm talking about the grown-ups now when it comes to the children that's what we did you understand me we just leaving them to fend for themselves right we got here we got here because we have not arcing and obeyed and we are experiencing the curses in our lives and thus the extended ex and extend to the community this is why we are seeing so much bloodshed on our streets our young people are going into alternative lifestyles and our young daughters are practicing whoredom and having children out of bad luck and some getting beat up so young having children out of bad luck you can have a 19 year old that have children two and three children for two and three different men that's where we are you understand me because we have not acted and obeyed we have not maintained your standard of righteousness in our home we ain't doing what we know we're supposed to be we ain't doing what our parents taught us because even if our parents didn't take us to church they made us go my mommy didn't go to church but we had to go to sunday school we had to go to church sunday morning even if it was for one hour she dressed us and we had to go to church and from church we had to go to sunday school and then we had to go to lessons and sometimes we had to go to evening church we don't do that no more you understand we don't do that we say no child these churches and these pastors and whatever and even if you don't send them to church or to assembly in your home you can do it you can do it but i'm just using the church to show how we have moved away from spirituality and morality spirituality in particular <clears throat> and as a result our standard of morality has plummeted. We, we got here because we measure ourselves by the standard of others and the world system. You know, the fallen stars. I see some quotes saying something about if Beyonce did this and then why you can't do it. And who have money doing this? why you can't do it that we measuring ourselves by them i call them fallen angels or fallen stars but they are stars fallen stars you see all these kind of memes talking about if this one do this and this one do that why you who ain't get oh one cell you who get two pairs of panty all kind of crazy stuff you understand me why you think you have to do it you see what i'm saying the man who dies suddenly, who women then used to go to for advice, and I couldn't understand why. You understand me? He would say, why you celebrate? Why you, you then over 30 and have two children, what you keeping that for? You need to just give that away. That's one video I saw from with him, and I was like, who listening to this man? You see? So we got here because we measure ourselves by the standards of others. People ain't got no moral standards in their life. And the world system and not by the law of yah you know, understand meaning our mindset is that they that they are doing that since they doing that since Nicki minaj and whoever else could do this and i'm just using her name i don't know you understand me and beyonce them could do this and who the next person is um cardi b eh? could do those things why you can't do it you understand and who the next one um what the person name Dwayne 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 Wade eh? yeah them because they doing it huh. so why can't you the church you know what I mean the the church leaders doing this well I can do that no 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 you obey ya you understand me you obey ya you live by the standards of Yah's law. See, those people who you're talking about, they don't have a heaven to put you in and a hell to take you out. That's how I look at it. 
You understand me? When people come saying, oh, you, you, you. I say, no, sweetie, you don't get heaven to put me in and hell to take me out. I ain't got to be concerned about all of them. They going to have to work it out for themselves. You understand me? We got here because we do not love Yah from our hearts to obey his commandments. Yahushua said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. The question is, do we truly love Yah? Are we demonstrating our love for Yah? Are we demonstrating that in our actions, in our word and deed? What we need to understand is that not because there's no peace in the world, not because the world is in chaos, you understand me, means there cannot be peace in your and us means that we cannot have that we have to have chaos and in, in our lives and in our home you understand me it doesn't mean that we can't have peace in our in us and in our homes and our everyday lives the instructions that Yah gave us is for us to have a good life to have Yah shalom Peace, joy, contentment, wholeness, wellness, prosperity, wealth, health, riches, success. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That is what his instructions is to us if we obey it. That is what happens when we obey our laws, his statute and his commandments. That is what obeying your brains to our life. See, what we see going on out there is because those persons, those people are not obeying the way of Yah. So they live in chaos. They were walking around, holding their head, don't know what to do. We have had a string of su a suicides here. People have been committing suicides. Do you understand me? Because they've been trying to follow the way of the world and keeping up with the world and, and trying to do this. And I believe someone said to me, why you think the people, um, you think, um, why you think so much people have mental issues and on the street? I said, you know something, because the last two years of being shut up in the house and um, I done being shut up down and COVID could have sent some people crazy, but it was losing your job. You understand me? Losing your job and um, losing your job and you then used to live in a certain lifestyle. And now your job in the way it is, your finances in the way it is, and a lot of people can't cope. And that's what's happening. They can't cope with where they are now in life. They ain't looking to say, look at this, it's just something I'm going through. I can come back from this. You understand me? Mama say they wiser and weaker. You understand me? So we got a wiser set of generation because they got everything at technology at their fingertips. They can Google this and all this other kind of stuff. Men are small. We barely had a library. Now you just going to put something into Google search. You got all these different search engines. So knowledge is at your fingertip. But the minute something happened, the minute they know internet, everybody walking around like they lost. You understand me? Some days we didn't even know electricity is off because we spent all day outside playing. You understand? But that's different now for this generation. It's different for them now because we have a wiser and weaker generation. You understand? <clears throat> we are not experiencing that because we are not hearkening and obeying all that he has put before us to do. We ain't experiencing his peace and his shalom because we ain't hearkening and obeying. See, we want to do what we see them doing. You understand me? We want to do what they what we see, but the most I expect us to live a certain way. So what working for them ain't going to work for you. And I realize that with me. Some people can get away with some stuff, but the minute you see me step on the line, whop. So I got to walk the straight and narrow. You understand? Y'all said if we are and obey, blessings will come up on you and overtake you. Deuteronomy 28 and 2. If you don't are and obey, we will be cursed with a curse. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. 
You understand? So as we go into the fourth piece of yah, we have to get it right. Not just for us, but for our children. He said, so that you and your seed will live. Today, as I've said before, is Yom Tura, Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpet, and we are in that season. The Feast of Trumpet is the first of the fall feasts. Yah, feast. Don't belong to the Jews or anyone else. You read Leviticus 23, and Moses gave Yishmael the Feast of Yah. You understand me? So for all those who say, oh, you're doing the Jewish and all that and that and that, uh-uh. Yah feast. These were the days that he told us to observe. And he said to do it for an, uh, um, as a lasting ordinance throughout your generations forever. I told my children when I was small, I used to read that. I used to be like, generations forever? Lasting generation? I remember reading that and pondering that. Like what that mean that somebody's supposed to be generations forever forever and ever throughout your generations so those people like the seven day adventists and Jehovah witness them who say no you don't gotta do it no more for much as they study the bible they miss that generations forever okay so these feasts are to be done throughout your generations the feast of trumpet is the first of the fall feasts Blowing of the trumpets has several different meanings. When they blew the trumpet, it meant it was as a battle cry and announced the king. It is to call a solemn assembly, calling the assembly to order or to send out the alarm to make aware of impending danger, to announce a victory and the announcing of the feasts and sabbaths. Today, I feel in my spirit, and I share this with my children, that this Feast of Trumpets is doing it all. It is time for us to call a solemn assembly, to come together in unity of mind and spirit. We have got to get in order. We are out of alignment with the will of Yah because we have not been practicing his law, statute, and commandments in our lives consistently like we should. Listen, after my divorce, I knew what I was supposed to know. I knew I was supposed to keep the Sabbath. I knew I was an Israelite. But I allowed that circumstance, that situation that kept, kept me off course, had me distracted, messed right up, and as a result, and that little grief, and that's how it, it didn't take long. It happened quick. I began to notice some stuff that I didn't like. You understand me? And so me, child, it, it don't take me long. I just run to the rock quick. Quick, quick, quick. So much I saw and I look, I run. I, I go on in there on my knees. I didn't say nothing to them. I just ran before the father. And I said, oh, yeah, uh-uh. You got to help me fix this. You understand? <clears throat> Because we have not been practicing his law, statute, and commandments in our lives consistently like we should. If you see something going a wire in your home as the adult, you are the reason. Because you need to call things to order. You need to tell them, uh-uh, come in here. Like Yahshua said, Yahushua said, Joshua, as for me and my house. But you see, we don't give away so much of our power because we want to be friends. You understand me? We want them to say, oh, you cool, you this, you that. I mind that. I don't mind that. You understand? I don't mind that. Right? Many of us, you can come turn it on. Many of us, <clears throat> We are in war. The sound in the alarm. We are in war. We are battling for the lives of our children and our young people. Many of us are being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. We ain't stable. We don't know what to believe. 
We hear them everywhere. We listening to this one. We listening to the next one. You understand me? All over the place. Too many are confused and do not know what to believe. The trumpet is sounding. Can you hear it? All that is happening and is also is telling us our king. It's also telling us that our king, Yahushua Amasiah, is on his way. Listen, last night we had a thunderstorm here and the rain came down heavy. And as I laid there, I said, Father, look at this. The first day of the Feast of Trumpets. Right now, yesterday, it was sunny outside. Right now, it's overcast, and that's why it was so dark in here. Because even though electricity is off, and here shouldn't be so dark, but it's overcast. And I said to my children, as I was saying, it, my daughter finished it, seasoned. It's a change in the atmosphere. The atmosphere change. You understand me? I want you to tell, tell you something is going on in the atmosphere. And I told them, this is calling us. When we take note of these things, only those who have eyes can see can see it. Do you understand me? That's the sounding of the trumpet. Something is about to happen. Some, you need to get yourself in order. There's a change in the atmosphere. Do you understand? Let us, at this time, use this time to introspect. And work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Listen to me. In this season of trumpets. Do you understand? Let us work it out. Use this time to introspect. To get ourselves in order. This is what have been the season of his return. On the day of atonement. I want to encourage you as a day of fasting and prayer. I want to encourage you to lay out before the Most High uh, in complete submission and repentance. This old season is about us uh, repenting. But that the day of the atonement is the day that we are supposed to fast, afflict our souls. You understand me? Lay it all out before Yah. Be broken and contrite before Him. Be naked and unashamed. Listen, stop carrying these weights and saying, you hold, you holding on to something that happened 20 years ago. Let it go. Free yourself. You understand me? Someone did something to you years ago. You still holding on to that. Let it go. You understand me? Use this time to go deep in and ask the most high to fix it for you. Put yourself on the potter's table and say, yeah, fix me. Fix me, yeah. Help me to get it right. Rid myself of everything. That's what I say to him. Everything in me, search me, oh yeah. Know my heart. Know my thoughts. Everything in me that is not of you, show me. Let me get rid of it. You understand me? There's ain't no time to be holding on to nothing. There's a change in the atmosphere. There's a change. You understand me? I am blowing the trumpet in Zion. As you listen to me, I'm blowing. I'm sounding the alarm on this feast of trumpets. Yashrael, the stranger mount us. Get it right. This is time for us to get it right. We have to go back to following the laws of the Most High from our hearts, not just our lip service. Do you understand? Those who have hairs to hear will hear. Not just our lip service, but our actions. We can be skipping and missing. Obeying the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Yah is a lifestyle. It is the way we live. Being an Israelite, listen to me, is not a religion. I've seen some things, I'm hearing some things, and I'm like, what are these people doing? It's not a religion. Yashrael is a nation whose custom and culture is rooted and grounded in the law of the Messiah.
I want to say this. Why you have these, some of the Israelite men, giving their wives alternatives, ultimatums, I'm sorry, on divorce. Where, where, where is that in the scripture? See, I'm talking now to about <clears throat> those persons who claim to know the truth. What scripture reference do you have to put away your wife? You two both are coming to an understanding of now being an Israelite. And she ain't getting it like you quick enough to say, well, she comfortable wearing the seat seats and the, the tassels and the head covering all the stuff. And you now making her do that. And of course she don't want to do it. You telling her either do it or you can divorce her. Where, where is that in the, in the scripture? Maybe I'm missing that. Where is that? Because I saw that on Facebook. Hmm? When... I think it's Ezekiel that said that Yah will write it on our hearts, put his spirit in us. And you're going to need to have, and even in Jeremiah, the new comment, you, he said, nobody going to have to teach you. I can teach you myself. Isn't it still a man's duty to cover and to love his wife? Didn't, in quoting Paul, said that if the unbelieving want to stay, let them? So why are we giving out ultimatum? Why are, you know, this being shared and shared? Because, you know, the sister saying, oh, the um, God delivered her from Hebrewism. Because we made being an Israelite a religion. And so God delivered her from Hebrewism. And when my daughter brought it to my attention, I was like, what is this? It's personal. Do you understand? It is personal. We have to get it right. It's personal. It's the Ruah Akadish jaw to lead and guide us in the truth, to teach us Yahweh. You can't make nobody wear no head covering or no tassel or nothing. That's out of their relationship with the most I the most you can do until they get there is to live a life before them. Let them see it in you. And through your love, then they will be persuaded or, or maybe be persuaded to do and, or, and to, to follow suit. And then all you do is pray and let the Ruah Akadish do the rest. You're not the Ruah Akadish in nobody's life. It's personal. We have to get it right in us first. Then we can affect change around us in our homes, on our jobs, and in the wider community. If there's no peace, love, joy in you, how can you give it to the world? You can't force nothing on anybody. Do you understand? The most I ain't forcing us. He gave us a choice. If you don't have a moral standard, how can you be an example of what others can strive for? Feast of Tabernacles is a time of preparing to meet the groom. We have to get our garments right without spot or wrinkles. These feasts are preparing us for the return of our King, Yahushua Amasiak. We know that this is the season of his return. What if this was the season? What if this was the season? What if this was the one right here? Would we be ready? We are, are we ready? Are you ready? Have we gotten all of the malice, envy, strife, contention, chaos, toxicity out of our lives? Are we still fighting with those sexual sins? Are we still gossiping, backbiting, and being deceitful, spreading lies and rumors, sowing seeds of discord, judging, practicing hypocrisy, walking in rebellion? Now you have some husband walking in rebellion, but one demanding that their wives submit to them. Come on, we got to get it right. Are we still struggling with eating unclean foods? These feast days are so important for us. They give us an opportunity to really see where we are 
and what we need to do in order to be the spotless bride without blemish. The question was asked, how did we get here? The answer is because we have not followed, we have not been following your way. Y-A-H-W-A-Y. We have not been following the way of Yah, meaning Yah's law, statute, and commandments the way we should. We got here because we do not love Yah from our hearts to obey his commandments. Yeshua said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. The question is, do we truly love love? Yah? Are we demonstrating our love for Yah? There is no love in the world because there's no love in us. See, there's no love outside of Yah. There's no life outside of Yah. You understand me? Yah said that I am life. And if you are going to obey all of me, all that I've said before you, then you can have life. I am your life. I think we just read that in Judah and me. I am your life. You understand me? We are supposed to be conduits of Yah's love to the world. We are supposed to be it. Yisrael. You understand me? We have not been walking in love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. You see, so you don't have to make anybody do certain things. You love them. And your love for them will bring them into right standing. Yahushua said, the greatest command is love on which the law and the prophet hang. Love Yah and love your neighbor as you love yourself. We have to love Yah first. We cannot love our neighbor if we do not love Yah. Our love starts with us loving Yah. When we look at the first four commandments required of us to love Yah, when we honor Yah and be obedient to him by not having any other deity above him or before him, other than him, not putting anything or anyone above him, honoring his name, not bowing down to false gods or idols by practicing pagan festivals like Christmas and Easter, then we will love our neighbor. See, when we get our love with love language to Yah, right first, which is obedient, then we will love our neighbors. And we won't kill, steal, and bear false witness, covet, commit adultery. You understand me? When we love Yah by honoring His Sabbath. See, the first four commandments is, has to do with us loving Yah. You understand me? Then we will perfect our love in Yah. And perfect love casts out fail. You understand me? Then we will be able to love our neighbors even in the state where they are in. Even when they are in their unrepented state, we will still be able to show love because love covers a multitude of sins. You understand? The solution to move away from where we are now is to get our love right. We have to start loving in word and in deed. We have to show love in our actions first to Yah, then to our fellow men. Yahushua is coming back for bride who has demonstrated her love for him by submitting to and obeying his commands. His commands which is inclusive of loving your fellow men. Are you ready for his return? Are we ready for his return? What if this was the season between this is the first day of trumpets, the first day of the false feast, and by between now and the end of the um the last day of tabernacle, the great day, the last great day, the eighth day, between though this time, what if Yah was to come? What if Yahushua was to come? Are we ready? You understand? The last great day. Day 8 of the Feast of Tabernacle. From the first day of Feast of Trumpet to the last day, great, last great day in this season. What if this was the time? That is something to think about. You understand me? On this first day of the season of trumpets, 
That is something to think about. What if this was the season? What if this was the last season? What if this? And you know, if this is not the last season, if Yahushua Messiah doesn't come this season, we give the most high thanks because now we have an opportunity to get it right. We are practicing. And that is what the keeping, that is what keeping the Sabbaths are about. We are practicing. This is a reason they used to see in the Christian church. So with every feast day that comes around, the spring feast, and now this is the fall feast, the fall feast is an opportunity for us to get it right and to be an example. You understand? So I want to encourage you, and this time and in this season, let's work on our love. Because that's what it's about. It's about love. It's about loving Yah and loving our fellow man. And we got here because we stopped loving because we stop loving. We don't, we stop showing love. We stop teaching love. You understand me? So I want to encourage you on this day to let's get it right. Let's start loving again. That's the way Yahushua showed us the love. Do you understand me? Without judgment. Do you understand me? Let me tell you what is so funny. And I had this written down. And thank you, Uwa. We judge people. And we condemn them. You don't have no right to do that. Because you didn't die for those people. Some of us, when we see someone in need, we talk ourselves right out of a reason not to have those people. Oh, child, she wearing this. And oh, she got her hair fixed up. And she wearing them lashes and stuff. She should have take that money and do that. And that may very well be true. So they didn't walk in wisdom. But their children are hungry. Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't want to give. Sometimes we see people hungry. We don't want to give them food. We sit in judgment before we help. And we condemn them before we help. You understand me? We can help, but still meet the need. I was sharing with someone. I saw some stuff. Went to help someone and I looked because she couldn't miss those eyelashes. You understand me? But in her lack of wisdom or whatever, she had four children that she wasn't able to feed. Do you understand? Huh? See, in doing certain things, I was able to say some things to her. You understand me? So these are the people we don't want, we don't want um, help nobody. But we quit to judge and condemn them to hell. Yahushua already paid the price. He was the atoning sacrifice. You ain't want to feed him, so I know you ain't going to want to die for him. Let Yah be the judge. How about that? Let the, the judge, Yah, who sent Yahushua to be the atoning sacrifice for the sin of us, let him judge us. Let him be the judge. You understand me? You either can help or don't help. But other than that, stay out of it. Stay out of it. And see, that's my prayer. This is the attitude now I'm trying to take. I've been saying to the Father, Father, you help me not to judge. Help me just to allow you to use me to be a conduit of your love, to show kindness. Let me be a David. Let me show kindness just for your sake. You understand me? Let me show kindness so these people can see in this hopeless world where there's no hope that Yah still cares. That he still, he still sees. That he still knows. Because you have a lot of people who feeling as if, boy, God didn't care. He really didn't care. You understand me? But when you come up and you with your act of kindness, you are the light in that dear darkness to let them see, yes, he see. When I took her that grocery, she's like, boy, yesterday. She said, miss, I was about to kill myself. Because I didn't have nothing to give my children. She said, look, you come. Did I say you? And I said, do you see how the most die? I said, he still sees. I said, when we are out there calling and looking to everyone else, we need to look up to Yah. I said, you look to him. See, because when you look to Yah, Yah can send someone 
who ain't and judge who can just come bring your need and ain't judging you when you go yourself and you calling this one calling the next one calling the next they say no tell you and you dress up like this and you dress up like that and you dress up in the next go to your first and this is why i always tell people i go to your first you always go to the room and i say fix it i go to him first you understand me because he can send someone who have his heart to meet my need without judgment, without condemnation. I go to Yah first. Yah is my first source and my resource. He is my help. You understand me? He is my refuge and my strength. He is my ever-present help in trouble. That's why I wear his name. See my shirt? That's why I wear his name. Because his name is a strong tower that I run to. I call on the name of Yah. And that's what I'm encouraging people to do. Listen to me. Call on the name of Yah. You understand me? Because you see, he can look beyond your fault and he can see, he see your need. You go there with this person who you talk with your friend and they looking and they judging you and all they can do make you feel bad. Let the most I put it in their heart to come. You don't know where to go or who to turn to. Go to Yah and let him direct you as to where to go and who to go to. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In this season of trumpets, in this season, I'm encouraging you. Let's get it right. Let's put you back where he's supposed to be first in our lives. You understand me? What if this was the season? Would we be ready? Is our love in order. I want to encourage you to get it right. Let's focus on getting ourselves in alignment with the plan and purpose of Yah for us and for what we are supposed to do in the earth. Shabbat Shalom and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the season, these feast days. Shalom.